I can have your attention in the media center and in the press box, we will now start our media availability for the post Coors Light Pull Award qualifying for the 59th annual Coke Zero 400, powered by Coca-Cola. And we're joined by our second place qualifier, Chase Elliott, driver of the number 24 Napa Patriotic Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. Chase, you're no stranger to the front row here at Daytona International Speedway. Could you walk us through your uh, final round of qualifying and how that the, the, the advantage that gives you going into tomorrow? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, I, I think our, our Napa Chevy is, is good. I was um, pretty pleased with it yesterday in our drafting runs, and we qualified really better than we were anticipating, I think, this weekend, which is nice. I think it shows our car has uh, has some nice pace to it, you know, out there by itself, which, which certainly can lend a hand when it comes to racing um, tomorrow night. So we'll see. Okay. We'll open the floor up for questions. If you have a question for Chase, Please raise your hand. We'll get a wireless mic to you. We'll start with Jenna and go to Greg. Jenna Fire, it'd be Chase. Does it? Uh, how does it help you for tomorrow that 300 cars are starting in the top four? I just think it shows that you know our cars have some pretty good pace as a whole as a company. Um, I think that's a, a big reflection of the engine shop and the power there. I don't know that us starting in the top, you know, three of us in the top five is all that much of an advantage but i think um the fact that the cars have pace is and i think there there is power in numbers as the race goes on and especially now as we see the manufacturers everybody kind of teams up and does all these strategy maneuvers and plays and tries to be really smart i think um you know there can be advantages in that you know just being around your teammates and if we're all fast then hopefully we can all be up towards the front together and if that's the case and i think that will be will be helpful, um, you know, when it comes to making pit stops and coming out, you know, on the racetrack after you get done with pit road and making time and not wasting time and, and losing time to that main pack. So all that stuff's very important. If we can all be bunched together during that process, I think that's nice. Greg. Greg Engel, AutoWeek.com. Um, you're obviously used to starting up front here, and you've had some success in, when it comes to that. But obviously, you know, you've had some issues during the race. Yesterday you were talking about not not you know not being afraid to to do whatever it takes even if it's passing you know your teammate on the final lap. How do you balance that against the fact of just wanting to survive with a good finish here, given the past record that you, that you've had? And I'm not digging at you. I'm just I'm just. Yeah. No. I think uh, you know we. I don't really look at the race any differently than I've looked at the other ones. I mean, I think you know with the way the um, you know if you're talking about just us needing a point race, I think that. You know, sure, there's been a lot of different winners, and I think it's going to be close. I don't know that there's going to be 16 winners. I think there is a possibility of there being, you know, pretty close to it, though. So I think there could only be a few a few spots uh, left. So if you don't have a win, I do think it is important to, to have points, you know, to be able to try to take one of those last couple spots that are going to be left, if, if there are any. If I'm, if I'm right on that, I don't know, but um, time will tell. But like I said, I don't. I'm not going to approach the race differently or try to points race. I mean, I think down here you kind of take your chances, try to be out front. That's the best place to be if you can get there, position yourself there at the right time, um, and, and try to maintain that track position as, as much of the day as possible. I think that's how these races are won down here more times than not. I think the guys that do it consistently tend to do that more often than not, and uh, that's what we're going to try to do. Additional questions for Chase. We'll go to Bob, then to <coughs> Dustin, then to Matt. Uh, Bob Hocker, CSPN. Uh, obviously, with this like <coughs> being Dale's last race here at Daytona, such a great track for him. Have, have you noticed him any different this weekend than past Daytonas? I just heard him on the radio said he might come back for the clash. Did y'all hear him? I'm going to go ahead and start that rumor right now. <laughs> so he, uh, he, MRN just asked, and Chip Wiles giving me a high five in the air. And they said, he said he might talk to the boss and see if he can see what he can come up with for the clash. So you heard it here first. <laughs> I have seen him a little, uh, you know, I, would, I wouldn't say a chip on his shoulder, but I, I do think he has been very, very determined this weekend on making sure his car is driving exactly like he wants it. He doesn't want it good. He doesn't want it great. He wants it perfect. And I think he's made that very apparent in our post-practice meetings 
Um, so yes, I think uh, I think he's very determined to run well here. Dustin. Dust Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, Chase, you talked about position, positioning, track position. We've seen a lot of times when the leader. Uh, is able to kind of go back and forth and weave and block, and it's really hard to get around. Has anything changed, or how do you get around the leader? Um, no, I think you're going to see a lot of that tomorrow night. I mean, that, that's definitely the package that we're currently running, and, and it, you know, it, until something drastic changes with the aero balance of these cars, I think that's going to be the name of the game. Um, you can do that, and, and you can have success with it. There's guys that are better at it than others, and those are the guys that you see lead a, a big, you know, majority of laps here throughout our race. Um, but on the same token, there are going to be times where, you know, those rows behind you, the energy is formed up at the right time, and they get big runs that you're not going to be able to block, really. Um, th there's going to be certain situations when you're out front and guys are going to have such a big run on you that, I mean, I don't care who you are, you pull up in front of them and your day is probably going to be done. So it's a matter of kind of cutting your losses and figuring out what's most important and if you are going to get past, if you're out front, which lane do you want to be in after that guy gets alongside of you? I think it's more of the game after after you get, uh, you know, a guy on the inside or outside of you more than it is whether they get there or not. Because at some point in time, they're going to get a big run, and I think you just have to be ready for that. Yeah, I just I remember him being, you know, just around the racetrack. I remember, you know, when Dad was racing – full time and, and we were coming to the track every week and I remember him just being still very involved and um, the biggest thing w w with with him over the years is the guy hadn't changed a bit. I mean you see him in the garage, he's up over there poking at tires and looking at cars and walking over and seeing what you got in your car and knowing that you're not going to tell him no so he's going to come over there and check it out anyway. So um, awesome guy, you know certainly a great ambassador for our sport. And you don't see many people that have the career he had have that and still come to the racetrack and show the passion he does every weekend, which is pretty cool. So um, happy birthday to him. 80 years is uh, pretty cool. We'll go to Matt, and then we'll go back to Jenna. Matt Weaver, AutoWeek.com. I apologize if this was brought up yesterday. I wasn't here. <coughs> but it seems like early on in your NASCAR career, you'd really been challenged by plate races, especially here. And now with a win in the Xfinity Series and in the Jewel earlier this year, you seem a lot more comfortable. Is there anything that's just changed, or is that just reps? Um, I, don't, I don't think anything has changed other than just having a little more experience with it and kind of – I mean, there, there's a lot of things that you can't control in these races, and I think everybody kind of feels like – you know, a lot of it's luck, and a lot of it is luck, don't get me wrong, but I, I think there are there are a lot of things that you can control um, in these races that are in your hands that, you know, might be a, a few, um, it might take a few instances to find a result, you know, in, in, in maybe something that doesn't work out for you that might have happened a few steps back that you need to kind of think back and say, hey, if I hadn't have done that, we might have been in a better position or placed myself in a better spot to try to have a little more success. To me, I think the fact that there has been guys over the past three or four years win a lot of these races consistently tells me that there is a lot of say in, in your result, and it, it is more than just luck. Um, so I'm searching very hard to find that because we do it four times a year, and they're important races. Jenna? You're going to love this question. So this movie came out before you were born. It's called Days of Thunder. <laughs> and it came out this week. We thought it was the 25th anniversary. It's the 27th. We had Dale Jr. in here talking about it earlier. Um, what if tomorrow night played out totally Days of Thunder-like, and it was you and Dale Jr. racing <laughs> for the for the win in the final lap? Well, how would that go if it, if if it was if racing was still like that? I don't know. Grab fifth gear, sixth gear, then seventh gear, and try to pass him. I don't know. In those movies, I feel like they just keep grabbing gears till they pass the guy. So. I don't know. <laughs> Just don't hit the pace car. Yeah. yeah. I don't really – I mean, if you go and you, you beat a guy straight up and, and you, you know, you, you have a good run on him and you're able to pass a guy on the last lap to win the race, I mean, I, I don't see how you could be a villain for doing your job, you know, at the end of the day. So – I mean, sure, everybody wants Dale to win his last race at Daytona or what might be his last race at Daytona, we'll see. But, um, but no, I, I don't see how 
I don't see how me trying to go do my job is going to make me a villain. And um, if people think that, then so be it. But but I'm going to go do my thing. And if I have an opportunity to pass a guy and you know do it the right way, then I'm going to try my best to do it. Any additional questions for Chase? Go to Godwin, please. Oh, there we go. Godwin Kelly with the New Journal. Um, along those lines, Chase, when they when they run the um, season finale at Homestead, it seems like anybody that's not involved in the uh, in the uh, uh, for the championship, the other guys give them a little bit more room. They don't want to be the guy that knocks somebody out. Is that kind of what's going to happen here tomorrow night? No, I don't. I don't think so. Um, I think it's very different than that. You, know, you definitely, when you get to Homestead. There is a sense of respect, I think, for those guys that are on the Final Four um, that are there. I, I think I think guys still race them, and then I think the further – when, you, when you're at Homestead, you know, I think the further you are towards the front, I think the more of a right you have to, to race for a win. You know, for instance, in the 42's case last year, I think he had a right to race Jimmy for the win, and he did um, as hard as he could. But, no, I, I think tomorrow night is going to be, you know, very uh, – every man for himself, you know, for the most part, you know, aside from what strategy you're going to see from uh, pit road and all the stuff that goes on, like I mentioned a minute ago. But, um, but no, I don't think you're going to – I don't think it's going to have – I could be wrong. It's not going to be that way for me, but, but I, don't, I don't think you're going to see that same um, tendency from all the guys like, uh, like you do down there. Well, Chase, congratulations on the front row starting spot, and good luck tomorrow night. Thanks. If I could have your attention here in the media center, we'll continue on with today's post Coors Light Pull Award qualifying for the 59th annual Coke 0400 powered by Coca-Cola. And we are joined by our Coors Light Pull Award winner, Dale Earnhardt Jr., driver of the number 88 nationwide Chevrolet for Hendrick Motorsports. This is his 14th pull and 612 Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series starts. Yeah, his terrible. second pull. It's a terrible here. stat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's your you second not, pole here. You could just stop. Yeah. There, that's good. Yep. Good? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was messing. I, I was going to add on. This is your second pole here at Daytona International Speedway. The last time you won a pole here, you did win the race. And you have automatically qualified now for the 2018 Advanced Auto Parts Clash at Daytona. So I'm going to throw it out there. Boom, yeah. you're coming back for that one. I'll talk to my boss, see what he's got in the, in the shed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we've got a lot of questions in here in the uh, deadline room. We're going to start with Jenna, go to Hill, and then to Bob. Hey, Dale, Chase was in here, and he said that you're very um, – I, in my words, not his, but you see, you're very locked in, and in all the meetings that you <coughs> want it perfect this weekend. Do you find yourself in a different zone for whatever reason this weekend? Um, I don't think so. I just know that um, I need the car a certain way, and need need the car to do certain things. And um, <coughs> we've we've had one debrief, and I did notice a. Uh, um, I did notice in a couple situations in practice some things about the balance of my car I didn't like, so we addressed that and started working on that, and I t brought that up to my teammates that um, I don't think a lot of guys got themselves in situations that to really see what their cars would do in, in traffic. And uh, so I just kind of brought that up as a, an, a bit of an alert, you know, to say, hey, look, you know, this thing might – handling might be a little more critical than we thought, and I – Every time we've been here, <clears throat> the last couple of trips, we've been a bit surprised by how how poorly the cars drive uh, as this uh, surface continues to age. And <clears throat> um, for the longest time after the repave, you didn't worry about handling. It just stuck like glue. But um, I was a little alarmed uh, in practice uh, by a couple things. Uh, we worked on it. I think we fixed some, uh, fixed them. And... Uh, so I was telling them, I said, you know, I just, got, you know, to be aggressive and be able to, you know, really be aggressive with the wheel and side draft hard and, and defend your position and, and make moves and, and make moves late and quick and surprise people. The car has to handle well. You can't be, you can't be, you know, t you can't have your hands tied by the car being, you know, real tight or you just can't create things and make things happen. So. 
that's all I was saying in, in those meetings with chasing them is that the car handling wise needs to be perfect to win the race. I mean, to really, if you get, if I get the, a, a really good handling car that, um, doesn't give, doesn't give me any issues, then, then I can just think solely about being on the offense and putting together moves or taking opportunities that I see in front of me. So, <clears throat> but, um, I feel great about the car, and, and we've learned some things. You know, we had our car spinning out on us uh, out of nowhere for a couple of years and uh, spun out on uh, – Chase spun out a couple of times. Jimmy spun out a couple of times, and um, <clears throat> Alex spun out at Talladega. I mean, we just couldn't figure out what was going on. So we've worked on our cars real hard to try to get them to hand on drive better, and I'm hoping that we made some big gains there. We're going to go to your right to Hill and then to Bob. Yeah, Hill Overton and Dale over to your right. WNDB Radio, congratulations <laughs> on your poll. Uh, Thank you. Hendrick Cars in the top 12. You guys had a strong showing, maybe a little bit of a surprise to some people. A uh, little extra potential, a little extra preparation this week. Did you guys do something maybe in the wind tunnel, a little more horsepower out of the engine compartment? Tell us about what your plans were, what happened. Well, to be honest with you, it seems like – um, we've been up in the top three or four at qualifying um, at Daytona and, and Talladega for a while. And uh, we've shared the front row a couple of times with the 24 car. Uh, the 24 car, a lot of times, was the one that we were chasing, whether Jeff was driving or, or Chase. And um, um, we finally were able to <coughs> to beat them, those guys today. <coughs> But um, when I go to the uh, super speedways, the 24 bunch is the guys that I sort of look at as the ones to beat for the pole. And that that sustained success by that team alone, I think, drives the rest of the company. And um, what Allen and those guys are able to accomplish when they come to Daytona and Talladega for just qualifying um, has driven our team um, to, to be better and, and, you know, that's proved today. So, um, I'm not surprised by the Hendrick speed. Um, I, I hope they're always finding more. I don't really know if anything in particular that we, we've done, but, um, they're always tuning in on the bodies and the motors. Um, you have to, I mean, what we can't, you know, what worked last year doesn't even, isn't even competitive in this, in this day and age with the cars and, uh, engineers learning so much <coughs> we're gonna go to bob then to claire then to dustin and then up to the press box uh, bob parker cspn do you feel more pressure this weekend uh, you said you pretty much need a win to make the playoffs a lot of people view this as your best chance yeah well it's a great opportunity you know i i, I think that um i'll look i'll try to look at it as just a good opportunity to go out there and, and get a win and um i you know i I know what I need to do on the racetrack, and try. I'll try to go out there and do that and do the best I can uh, and drive the race that I need to drive and um, hopefully put, you know, hopefully that has me in position late in the race, and hopefully. I mean, there's so many good, talented cars and talented drivers. Hopefully we can we can get the job done. There's a lot of things to, to do still for the before we see the checkered flag. There's a lot of things to, a lot of work to do. But I don't know that I'm in. Uh, I'm feeling any more pressure than we typically feel when we come to Daytona. We always seem to be in the conversation when we show up about being one of the guys that's a favorite or a contender, and and that's always been the case when we come here. So I've always kind of had a little bit of that to deal with. So I don't think it uh, makes me feel any different about this weekend. Go to Claire. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. Chase told me that as good of a racer that you are, you're an even better friend. And uh, he said that he looks up to you and that, you know, he's learned a lot from you. Um, you know, he feels That's pretty strongly, nice. feels pretty strongly about what, what you've, you know, been to him. So I envision at the start of the race, you two will look at each other and kind of eyeball each other. And the greatest thing ever is you two, you the veteran and he the young guy coming up you know, going at it at the takeoff this race. Uh, how do you see racing him, what he's got and what you've had over the years? Well, um, we had a chance to work with him at Junior Motorsports, you know, and he won us a championship. So I'll be grateful to him 
for that for a long time because of what it done, did for our company and all our employees. On top of that, aside from just being successful and, and talented, he's, he's uh, you know, his daddy did a good job. His mom and daddy did a good job raising him. He's a real, he's well-spoken. He's polite. Uh, he's got a great work ethic. He's very focused about his driving and his racing, and he puts in the work. Uh, he just, I think that, um, you know, he, he's every, everything you could ask for in a driver and a teammate, and, and he's as young as young as he is. He's just going to continue over the years, not only to get better and more talented, but to to sort of, you know, p pick up a lot of other things, too, that <coughs> make you make you uh, great in and outside the car. So, um you know, he also has Jimmy to be around, which is an incredible person to to learn from. So he's really in a great situation to, uh, you know, he's got a great owner. I, look, I think he's got great teammates and, and an awesome crew chief. He's just in a really nice situation to, to grow and improve. <clears throat> but he was already, <clears throat> he already had a great foundation before he got, to the cup level as far as his personality and his uh he knew exactly what he was getting himself into you know having grown up around this and been around this so long uh he knew you know he he's nothing su nothing really sh surprises him or shocks him there's not a situation that pops up where he's unaware of or you know and so that's that just comes from growing up around it and it's a good advantage for him to have but he's uh he's been a pleasure I, man i mean you know We've we've got along great, and he's a um, <coughs> he's much younger than I am, but we um, we get along great, and uh, he 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 still likes to live in Georgia, which I find kind of odd, but <laughs> I, I would, um, but you know that's where he wants to be, and he flies his little helicopter up to Hendrick. Did he tell y'all about that? Mm -hmm. Good lord! So he has this helicopter. It looks like a chips helicopter, a little bubble. <laughs> <coughs> little glass ball flying through there and I'm I it blow that blows me away that he has the confidence and composure to just jump that thing and go and that's that to me is a bit of that to me says a lot about him and his character and he just jumps in that thing and flies him I'll be at the meeting I'll see you tomorrow and he flies up from Georgia in his helicopter and comes to the meeting and he'll we'll, we'll have the meeting and he'll go run four miles around the shop and come back and <clears throat> he just plugged in. But I think that, um, you know, his dad, his, his dad's has, there's a side of Bill that I really didn't learn about until much later in his career. Uh, whereas like Bill goes out to, uh, skiing and he's a bit of a, he kind of thrill seeker, I guess, or, or, you know, he has this, competitive nature that still burns inside of him he's just went to India and raced with Ray and that deal so um and I see that in Chase too you know he's just he, he ain't scared to learn how to fly a helicopter I mean who does that at that age like I'm gonna learn I'm gonna get my pilot's license I'm gonna fly my helicopter so I can live in Georgia I just don't I, I was not thinking about those things at that age <laughs> just so impressive so to me, that says a lot of you know that 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 says a lot about him to me. Okay, we're going to go to Dustin, bit of the press box, and then to Dinah. Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Uh, Dale, some people suggest that that this weekend is your last true best shot to win and make the playoffs. <coughs> what do, what do you say to them? Well, I don't have a whole lot to back up that argument to, or uh, to to go against that argument. I guess I don't have a whole lot of. Um, statistics to show you or uh and i don't think i've done much on the racetrack in the past several weeks that would change your change your opinion or anyone else's opinion if they had that but um with <coughs> you know with greg and my team i'm confident in them that uh, we could show up anywhere and and surprise everybody and if we don't you know, happen to come out of here and win this race. Um, the urgency will pick up. 
as it would as every week goes by. But my confidence in our ability to get a win, I mean, we 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 can go to Pocono and win. We can go to Michigan and win. I don't see why we couldn't go to those places and win. Uh, we were pretty competitive at both of those tracks, just to name a couple. But uh, it's definitely going to – you know, we are running out of time, and I'm not – you know, I'm aware of that. But I still feel like that <clears> – <throat> Yeah, this is probably our best shot to win, but we can win at other racetracks. We got that ability to do that. It's been a very frustrating, tough year statistically, but what I see in my team gives me the confidence and the belief that we can we can still get a win at one of these tracks before we get to the chase. Okay. Press box, we'll go to you next. Hello, press box. Okay, we'll come back downstairs to Dinah. Hi, Dale. Dinah Pulver with the Daytona Beach News Journal. I did a little analysis this week of the penalties thus far across the three season, the three series this season, and Hendrick Motorsports or JR Motorsports has absolutely zero lug nut penalties, while a lot of other teams have had a lot of lug nut penalties. Why is that? <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm superstitious. Um, why is that? I mean, you know, I think that uh, we've been fortunate. You know, there is a human error side to that that you can't escape, and I know a lot of teams have been caught with that. So I'd say that uh, we have a lot of good, talented guys, uh, and we've also been very fortunate. <clears throat> but it could happen to anyone. Uh, any given weekend because it's uh, the competition on pit road has gotten so tight and those guys can't can't uh, make mistakes and but sometimes you're going to have those but so far we've been fortunate I, I would just chalk it up to, to to I know that those guys want some credit for being talented and I want to give it to them for sure but there's a little bit of you know fate and luck into that too Go to George, then to Holly. Yeah, Dale, back here. George Diaz with the Orlando Sentinel. Congratulations on the poll. And <coughs> obviously, for you, there's a lot of sentimental stuff going on. But, you know, there's another guy here who's a little bit of a sentimental journey with Richard Petty turning 80. Can you reflect on him and his career and what, you know, he's meant to you? And also, if you have any stories that you share, you remember from, you know, days with your dad and, and Richard? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't have any pop into my mind <clears throat> the uh when he won I was here when he won 200 and uh was in that tent when we ate fried chicken with the president and uh boy that was a cool experience and in my mind we have Richard Petty to thank for that uh I have Richard Petty to thank for that experience um <clears throat> it just seemed like all that was lined up in destiny you know for Richard to win. The president was there. We had this post race sort of picnic that never happens, right? And uh, it was incredible. It was a really in interesting experience. And I remember my father sort of, you know, being like, you know, set up straight, mind, you know, mind your manners, you know, just that he was, even though he didn't win the race, usually he's very grumpy after the races and uh, that he doesn't win. But he was, he had, the race was farthest thing from his mind at that moment because he, uh, ha it was important for him uh, in that moment to celebrate the, the president's uh, being there and, and Richard winning and, and all that. I remember that um, <clears throat> a lot. I think about that a lot. But um, I never talked to Richard much. I had some conversations with Kyle off and on over the years. But then when I started working with Goodies, I got to shoot some commercials with Richard and actually talk to him and be around him. <clears throat> and he, you know, he has a great personality and he's very approachable, obviously. Easy to talk to, doesn't shy away from conversation. He gets, a he gets approached and talked to all the time, every day, every minute, it seems. Um, but he's always open to that and accepting that, and I think that he's 
he's a reason why the sport's really a, like like it is. Why you know they talk about drivers are so accessible and all you know people we have people from other sports or uh, you know particularly from other sports come to our races and go wow I can't believe how how the fans are right here right on the race you know down at the race you know and the fans can get everywhere you go there's there's fans and I think that that's because of guys like Richard if it's not solely Richard's uh, credit it's because of people like him that started it out like that you know he, he, he set the standard for how the drivers interact with the fans that we all you know sort of follow so uh, he get, he should get a lot of credit for you know when people say NASCAR is accessible Richard Petty should be in that conversation of why and and how and um, <clears throat> so I, I, I think that he deserves that but again, I got to talk to him and get to know him a little bit over the last couple of months working with the good, goodies folks over the ca- past couple of years, actually. And then when I got hurt last year, see, Richard would always come up and say, you know, hey, how you doing? Um, but then when I got hurt, he would come up and grab me and put his arm around me and we'd have a conversation. And he would say, are you doing what you need to do? Are you taking care of yourself? Don't do anything you don't need to do. Make sure you're doing all right. I want to make sure you're doing all right. He was so, you know, genuinely concerned which meant a lot to me because, um, you know, I knew he showed he cared about me. So I thought that was pretty awesome. Considering all the things he has to deal with and all the people he has to deal with, that meant a lot to me. Holly? Holly Kane, NASCAR.com. Um, I know it's been a little while since you won a pole or won a race, but what you did here today, the love of the fans, I mean, how aware are you of how happy this made them? I mean, it's very <coughs> – very rare that you can hear an applause like you did today on pit road after you crossed the the finish line well that's great you know um we haven't had a a a lot to be happy about on the racetrack this year we haven't had a whole lot to celebrate and um (coughs) as a driver and i think as i think as as a team you want you feel responsible to deliver the fans have expectations. You have expectations of yourself and, and what you should be able to accomplish on the racetrack, and, and you feel that responsibility to deliver. They come to the racetrack to see you lead and run up front, and then they don't. I mean, you can feel the you can feel the frustration coming through Twitter and social media after the races where you don't you're not a factor, and uh, they want it. They want you to be up there. Why aren't you up there? I came to the race to see you run up there. Get up there. Um, and so I know that that I, that's evident to me and follows, you know, it follows you around everywhere, every week. So, uh, and it's a responsibility. I take it, you know, I think that it's my, you know, I'm supposed to get up there and do it. They think I can do it. I think I can do it. So, but get, not to get too far, but it, it, it feels good to give them something to cheer about. And hopefully that gets them excited for tomorrow. Hopefully folks are tuned in and, and. Um, we get a great race, and hopefully we're part of the celebration at the end. Hopefully we're, we're at least part of the, you know, the excitement at the finish. Dale, our questions from the press box, twofold. One, Tony Stewart used to be your favorite drafting partner. Who is it now? Who do you trust to take you to the finish line? And the second part of that question, you know, you practiced here in the day. Are you confident that kind of balance is going to carry over to the night? Um, I'm hoping that any of the – in the daytime, the track's hotter. Cool, you know, it, in the race, the track's going to cool off. Any kind of real issues you have in, in the sun are going to calm down a little bit at night. So I'm hoping that what I felt and didn't like about the car, we either fixed or uh, as the track cools off and we run later tomorrow night, they're less evident and not much of a factor. Uh, I There's kind of two sides to that. You want the track. And ha- you want handling to be very critical. Uh, you want guys to not have good handling cars, but you want to be <laughs> you want your car to handle great. You don't want everybody to have all the grip in the world. That's not going to be a lot of fun. But um, you want you want the track to be slick, but you want your car to drive the way you need it. And so, man, that's asking a lot. But it, the track's heading in that direction. So, uh, what was the other question? Who's you, who's you gonna, who are you going to trust to draft my with new tomorrow night? Partner? I don't know. Whoever wants to push us to the win tomorrow be my best friend. <laughs> I'll, well, I'll invite him over to the pool Sunday. Good deal. 
We'll finish here with Al. Hey, Dale, Al Pierce from Auto Week. Uh, a non-NASCAR question for a second. I looked at a replay today of the set of the 99 IROC race at Michigan. It looked like you were as happy to finish second as your dad was to win. <coughs> was, that a, was that a big day for you and him? Do you remember the details of oh, yeah. that deal? I wasn't. Oh, so <coughs> my emotions after that day, I was mad at Rusty because Rusty, I had a run on dad off of, I got to the outside of him and side drafted him and I was ahead of him when we come off of the turn four and I was kind of moving by, he doored me, which stopped my momentum and basically put both of our cars at a standstill. Rusty, y'all know the history between dad and Rusty, they were friends, but kind of rubbed each other the wrong way and always, you know, kind of digging at each other and very competitive on and off the track. If one bought a plane, the other bought a plane. If one did this, the other did this. Well, this was Rusty's chance. All he had to do was get in behind me. I was already leading my dad by a half a fender. If Rusty tucks in behind me, he quarter panels, side drafts dad, and I win the race. But Rusty went down behind dad, got dad moving again. So dad's kind of going back by me, and, ends up, and dad ends up winning the race. And I'm thinking, man, if I'm Rusty, that was his opportunity to really rub it in. And so I don't know why Rusty did that. I don't want to know um but i was frustrated because i thought i had him and how awesome would that have been to beat your dad in equal cars i'm thinking man here was my shot so i went to victory lane and if i looked happy it was because i probably was expecting dad to admit some uh admit some level of defeat or at least acknowledge how close i came to beating him but he never did. And he was like, how about that? Huh? I won. And I'm like, damn, you almost lost. <laughs> you ain't going to even mention how close I came to beating you? And he would not give me any satisfaction. Um, but that, to me, I mean, it's, you know, you watch a lot of race. I, I, I'm guilty of watching, you know, my own wins and, you know, memories and stuff. It's fun. I watched that one quite a bit. There's a video on YouTube. It's like the last five laps. I watch it quite a bit because I don't, you know, I know I'm not going to win, but just how close I came to beating him that day. And I was, I was just in the Xfinity series. You know, I didn't have a ton of, I still kind of raw as a driver, but man. And the whole race, he's sitting there like giving me this hand signal to stay behind him, stay in line, stay behind him, stay in line. And he told me before the race, he said, if you stay in line, we can win this. I'm like, we? <laughs> I'm like, how do we win? And so, <laughs> and I was like, I don't even know how, I didn't know that, I'm like, I don't buy that. I'm not, you know, st me stay in line, that's, we're not going to get past, or what, how's that going to help me or you? But he was right. I stayed behind him the whole race, and he was worried every lap, waving down the straightaway, because he thought, he knew I was antsy to try to pass him. <clears throat> And uh, I'm thinking, man, I did it just right. I waited till the very end. I got more tire than he's got. He's out here wore out, and I had him set up just perfectly. And uh, all I needed was just a little help from Rusty. And he wanted, he, he, I don't know whether he knew he was going to help Dad or what, but he helped Daddy get back by me. <laughs> God. But I, I still, yeah. I wasn't that, I mean, I wasn't like, I was thinking, man, I'm going to go to Victor Lane, and he's going to be like, damn, man, you might beat me. But that's not, you know, that just wasn't in his nature. <laughs> well, Dell, we're going to see how many people will actually tweet out that YouTube link so we can watch that highlight yeah, tonight. That's a good one. Yeah. Well, good luck. Good luck tomorrow, buddy. See y'all later. Yep. I don't think so.